I'm guessing that you might have guessed completely that what this video is about. Yes, this page is from the first page of class 6 NCRT Geography uh, of which today we are to complete the whole class like class 6 all the chapters in this very video and see how important how relevant it is. See if it's an NCRD of class 11 or 12 I would suggest that you take time you give time to that because that is important because a lot of you might not have had arts in your class 6 or uh, in your class 11 and 12 but if you're uh, reading uh, NCRDs of class 6, 7, 8, 9, something like that, just be quick and, uh, you know, just complete it beautifully and fast, like, you know, in a swift manner. Because at the end, these are very basics you might have read somewhere or something like that. So this video entails all the important portions from all these chapters so that you do not have to give more time than required. Let's start. <laughs> The first chapter that we have is the earth in the solar system from which all the important words are highlighted from what you need to know. The full moon is known as Purnima, new moon night is Amavasya. We have celestial bodies. So celestial bodies are what? Sun, moon, object shining in the night sky and stars are celestial bodies only which emit uh, light in large amounts and have their own heat also. The second page we have the constellation, the pole star, the planets. Only these, these words are important. So constellation is what? Different groups of stars. Pole star is the north star which is also called the pole star and planets again are there which are celestial bodies but this time they do not have their own heat or light and that is why they are called planets. This is the difference between the stars and the planets. The third is the total what solar system comprises of. It's the sun, it's the the planets is the earth so sun is the center it's huge it's extremely uh, made of uh, hot gases and it binds the solar system it's the source of heat and light and everything planets all the planets are there which you all know they evolve in an elongated uh, orbit and again we have the earth this is the third nearest planet and the fourth largest planet and this has the shape of geoid which initially we kicked uh, had it known as round so geoid is the correct answer for the shape then we also have moon and before that we have a small portion from the earth part where why is earth favorable for us because of the water the air the oxygen and everything moon we have it's the only satellite one quarter of the earth and also moon takes 27 days to revolve to uh, round about the earth and the earth takes a similar time that is why you'll find that only one sided uh, face of the moon is visible then we also have asteroids these are the tiny bodies that orbits around the sun they are found between the orbits of mars and jupiter and Ceres is one asteroid which is the largest we also have meteoroids which are small pieces of rock moving around the sun with this we have two new concepts meteors and meteorite and the difference you can just know about it because this is not there in class 6 chapter 1 in CRT and yes meteorite passes through the earth's atmosphere and it falls on earth's surface so it creates a hollow so that is why you'll find that uh, in movies a lot of times we have seen meteorites meteors is like the naked eye phenomenon because yes it's the shooting star that we all know about we also have the galaxy akash ganga and universe concept which this figure will clear it out for you then we move on to the next chapter so yeah this first chapter was that easy it took us two minutes and we concluded the whole chapter and it was easy also so uh that is why I am telling you, just do not start making notes about it. Do not just start mugging up in things. Figure it out what's important, what's not important and eventually evaluate. So the second chapter, the first thing, globe is a true model miniature form of the earth. And here we have the equator is imaginary circular line, important reference point for us. And equator represents the zero degree latitude. We have the north latitudes, we have the south latitudes again. Then we have the important parallels of latitude. We all know about Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn, Arctic Circle, Antarctic Circle. Take note of the torrid zone, temperate zone and frigid zone because torrid zone receives the maximum heat which is between the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn. We have temperate zone, moderate temperature and frigid zone, very, very cold. These are all because of the sun, the position of the sun. So if you're asked, you can write it down. The longitude, you can just conclude it in these two highlighted points that is it takes 360 degree in about 24 hours to revolve so one degree in four minutes and that is why if you are in the greenwich time which is considered as a zero degree if you move towards east you catch up time if you move towards west you lose time 
Also in India, we have 82 degree 30 minutes east as the standard meridian and this is all because that we cannot have a similar time and the reasons you all know because it's not possible for a country to uh, you know customize themselves according to the different time zones because the country works as a single country single government single everything and not the separate way so yes indian standard time is 82 degree 30 minutes east that was it with the second chapter the third chapter is motions of the earth and here we'll see we have the rotation we have the revolution the orbital plane the circle of illumination and accordingly uh, we have the chapter because motions of the earth is all about why the season changes the time changes where's the leap year and everything rotation is the movement of the earth on its axis and revolution is movement around the sun in the orbit circle of illumination is that divides the day from night now the small portion called elliptical orbit you might have heard people saying that winters the days are short and in summers the days are long and things like that that is all because of this elliptical orbit because the earth revolutes around the sun that is the cause for the seasons to change we have summers and winters and everything like that but the earth revolutes in an elliptical orbit that is the reason for the variation of length of day and night to change and the rotation is because the day and night yes changes we have days and nights is the fact that the earth rotates so we again because of this elliptical orbit we have the summer solstice winter solstice and equinox which you will eventually know is because of the apparent movement of the sun when the apparent position of the sun is over the equator we have the equinoxes when it moves up towards the tropic of cancer we have our uh, summer solstice and when it's moving towards the tropic of capricorn it's our winter solstice and do remember that this is the apparent movement in reality the earth is moving the earth is rotating the earth is revoluting then we come to the fourth chapter we have maps the definition of maps is given it's a representation of a drawing of the earth's surface or a part of it is drawn on a flat surface according to a scale and when many maps are put together it's called an atlas then we have the types of map we have physical maps political maps and thematic maps physical maps the natural features mountain plateaus plains rivers oceans political we have cities uh, towns villages countries states with boundaries and thematic that is the specific information if it's required like road maps or rainfall or things like that we have it like that we have components of maps that's called distance direction and symbol distances like small distance on paper is equal to the large distance the specific mention is there that's according to the scale directions can be found with the help of a compass and that is why it's mentioned there and symbols is that instead of mentioning the uh, description as in the actual shape or size which is not possible we uh, use certain letters or drawings and for that uh, this component is also beneficial and then we have the small two portions like a sketch and a plan so a sketch is a drawing based on the memory so it's like if you are drawing out a map or something like that but you're not precisely correct or things like that so that's called a sketch and a plan is a drawing of a small area on a large scale and uh, this is like you know a detailed representation and accordingly this is the end of fourth chapter we come to the fifth chapter we have the major domains of the earth and you will not believe that the whole chapter comprises of just the description of lithosphere atmosphere hydrosphere and biosphere so we have these four things lithosphere is like the uh, solid thing atmosphere is like the air uh, hydrosphere is water and biosphere is the combination of all these three things so the solid portion rock of crust the soil with nutrients and the oceans part also so we have continents also we have water bodies also and all of these comprises of the lithosphere and in this we have the five major oceans also and in this we also have the seven continents that are there and a small description about the continents are also given here of what they are where they are and how are they differentiated and everything like that so if you want to go through them these are all very basics you will already be knowing about it but if you still want to go through them you can go through them in this very chapter then we come to atmosphere 
gaseous layer thin blanket of air it's divided into five layers and that's also we'll uh, read some time at some point of time there's a troposphere stratosphere mesosphere thermosphere and exosphere here it's mentioned that 78 percent of its is nitrogen in atmosphere 21 percent oxygen and others is one percent of which co2 is also there hydrosphere we come to when uh, we'll see it's the water area the blue planet the 71 percent of water and 29 percent land the glaciers oceans rivers underground water vapor everything and then the last is biosphere this is all forms of life it includes all the three uh, and it's called the narrow zone of contact also in which all three are there so biosphere is important because this makes the uh, value of life and this makes sure that the living beings exist and all of these are working together to give us the sustenance the value of living and accordingly we proceed just this was it with this chapter then we have the sixth chapter we have the major landforms of the earth of which we look into the uh, mountains the uh, plateaus the plains and everything so in this we have the internal uh, formation for formation of landforms and we have the external process also so internal is because of the upliftment or the sinking and external is maybe because of the continuous bearing down rebuilding deposition erosion and everything like that in different landforms if we come to we have mountains first then plateaus and plains the mountains are the natural elevation we have less population here less farming here and we have three kinds of mountains we have the full mountains block mountains volcanic mountains the full mountains like examples are aravalli which is the oldest we have himalayas as as the young ones the appalachians in north america and the ural mountains in russia are the old full mountains so all of these examples are given there block mountains are there why are they formed how are they formed the diagram is given there if you want to uh, see you can see because they are created when large areas are broken and displaced vertically and then we the example are the rhine valley and uh, volcanic mountains the kilimanjaro in africa or the mount fujiyama in japan so all of these are something when you look around the mountains just make sure that you know which kind are these and uh, how are they helpful or how are they disastrous to us then we have the benefits of mountains yes it's acts as a storehouse of water we have the water sources as glaciers and things and those waters are then used for irrigation and because of the height we have the generation of hydroelectricity and also the river valleys can be used for crops we have the rich variety of flora fauna also it's a tourism sector that's benefiting and the sports also are uh, kind of entertaining then we have the plateaus uh, elevated flat top table land oldest in india is the deccan plateau east african in kenya and tanzania and uganda also highest is the tibet it's rich in mineral deposits iron manganese and coal in chota nagpur is also an example and because of all these we also again have waterfalls of this hundru falls in uh, chota nagpur and jog falls in karnataka are examples and lava plateaus are also rich in black soil fertile good for cultivation so all of these are benefits you can write about them plains we have the large stretches of flatland thickly populated regions because it's very fertile and uh, because it's formed by ganga and brahmaputra in india and also examples are yangtze in china and it all it's also productive for cultivation and that is why this is the reason why we have the thickly populated area there they can also be used to grow crops they can be uh, you know it's easy to build a house also and then uh, the roads are in a plain and the shops and everything you know it's easy to walk in all of these so that is why these are beneficial this we come to the next chapter this is about the india physical the landform the lofty mountains the great indian desert northern plains uneven plateau surface coasts and islands it also shares about the india physical features that is the uh, uh, longitude stretch of india and uh, the indian standard time that already we've discussed that is 82 degree 30 minutes east and that's the standard meridian of india which is it's called as then we have the physical division so for the first thing like we talk about is the great himalaya or himadri we have the middle himalaya or himachal and then the shivalik in the southernmost range this is like in the north part of india uh, then we have the northern indian plains uh, which is the south of the himalayas they have the alluvial deposits provide fertile land and everything this is we are talking about uh, the states like uttar pradesh and all we also have the great indian desert uh, that is like rajasthan peninsula plateau triangular in shape this is the main part you know like your madhya pradesh and uh, your Uh, Maharashtra and everything like that. Vindhya, Satpura is here. Narmada and Tapi flow through these ranges, which drain into Arabian Sea. Western Ghats are also known as Sahyadris. Do not forget this. Then Eastern Ghats are there, and then we also have coastal plains of which. 
like we all know the western ghats and the eastern ghats are there of which 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 western ghats is the narrow one and the eastern ghats are the broader one and the Oh, we have a lot of east flowing rivers like Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and also the Sundarban Delta. So do not forget about that. All of these are mentioned here. These are very easy, very basics. But you need to know about these. You need to keep these in your uh, somewhere in your mind. Lakshadweep Islands are the coral islands located off the coast of Kerala and Andaman and Nicobar lie to the southeast of the Indian mainland in the Bay of Bengal. This we come to again another chapter. It's talking about weather and then we have the major seasons recognized in India of which one is the cold weather, hot weather, southwest monsoon and season of retreating monsoon and uh, in this when we talk about the cold weather we have the cool dry winds, it flows from the north to south, sun rays are not direct, the temperature is low in north India and it's the time of December to February. When we have the hot weather, it's the hot dry loo that flows and then direct rays are there, temperature is high, it's the season we are talking about March to May. And then we have the uh, southwest monsoon, which is the onset and advancement of the uh, monsoon. Uh, the moisture laden winds flows. It flows from Arabian Sea to Bay of Bengal. So it's a sea to sea flowing and it occurs after striking the mountains. The uh, month we are talking about is June to September. And the season of retreating monsoon is the uh, Mainland, it flows from the mainland to Bay of Bengal, so it's a land to sea thing. And most rain are brought by the monsoon winds. And the only place that they get monsoon is Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. And this uh, uh, month we are talking about is October and November.